Now, the next little bit is a little bit more Photoshop only. So what I'm going to do, uh, like I say, brides are want to be celebrities these days. Um, they are, the videographers are providing them with three and four minute videos where the, where the entire wedding party are part of the video, usually to something in the charts. And the photographers have to be far more imaginative. So what I would do with this and I've had requests like this, is let's lose the text off the bottom there and turn it into um, a magazine cover. Very, very simple to do. Now, I do have a magazine cover that I have already created. I'm going to open this up uh, and show it to you in Illustrator, which was where it was created. Uh, in fact, I'll give you an idea first of um, in Bridge what kind of thing we're, we're looking for. Um, I have here celebrity magazine covers and I'm looking for something. Here's some samples. This is the kind of thing that people are asking for. This sort of, of look. There's hello, there's okay, there's a million of them. This kind of look is what we're aiming for. Now luckily, if you're doing this, once you've created one, creating derivatives of it, so, so easy. But that's the kind of thing that we're looking for. So I would get samples um, and I would use those to make my own and that's exactly what I did and I have it in Illustrator so I'm going to open that in Illustrator it was created in Illustrator but if you don't have an illustration program no problem you could do this in anything um, it could certainly be done in Photoshop I just find it a little bit easier working in Illustrator so I have everything apart from the photograph so that was created in there what I'm going to do now is close that down. You don't actually need that. If you have, um, if you don't have the ability to do that yourself, get somebody else to do it. They can give you the Illustrator file and you can work with that in, in Photoshop. You do not need Illustrator to work with it. Now, the trick is to get that into Photoshop, go to File, but you don't open the file. You select to place the file. And then it gives you your file system again. So I'll go back into my wedding photos, celebrity magazines, and there is my hollow um, masthead. So I'm going to select to place and OK. And what that does is it brings it in very small, but it's got a cross in it. And what it's what that means is you can now resize this, reshape this, put it where you need to to create the look that you're looking for. So I will make that a little bit bigger. And I want to get the faces in just the right place. And possibly a little bit wider there as well. Just about that. And then I need to move that. So I want to get the text just covering the hair there. That's about right. And I can make that a little bit wider if I need a little bit more of him in it. And that looks fine. Now. At this stage, it isn't finally rendered. Um, it's just brought it in and it's letting me resize it at this stage. When I press enter, it will render that and it will stop looking quite so pixelated. So I'm pressing enter and it's thinking about it and there it goes. Now, obviously that looks odd at the minute. It looks odd because it needs to be cropped now. We don't need the rest of this bit over here. So I will take that out and I'm going to crop it. Have a quick look at it. That looks just about right and crop it. And there I have a magazine cover. But if you looked at those sample magazine covers, not many of them had black and white images um, on the front cover. But I've already used this on something else and I'd already made it black and white. But I did say it was going to be non-destructive. So I can always go back in and I can turn off the black and white and turn the colour back on. If I want it to have some um, black and white but some colour showing through then I can change the opacity, uh, wrong opacity there, hang on, let me get the right one. It is U, there we go, and I can change that in there. So I can bring back a little bit of colour or I can actually choose to turn that layer off completely which is the black and white layer. So I'm quite happy with that, that looks fine. Now, I am going to do something else with this, but I had another magazine cover there and I am going to show you how you can have two magazine covers from the same image really, really easily.
So I have um, down in my layers, let's have a look. I have my original photo, which is the background. I have a folder called How to Wow, which was the title um, of the demonstration the first time I gave this. And then I have my magazine up there. And what I need to do is to put another magazine up there. Very, very simple to do. I'm going to turn off the view of that magazine, go back to File, down to Place, and this time choose the other magazine, which instead of um, OK is actually KO. And click OK. Again, it's uh, put it in the middle. But now I know that that's just the right size, all I've got to do is rescale it up to just the right size and press enter. And I now have two magazine covers. So I can turn that one off and turn the other one back on and they all live in the same file. No problem at all. Now for the next step, um, it's taking, I've now got two turned on, that looks strange. Right, for the next step, it's taking this magazine cover and doing something with it. So to do that, um, what we've got so far in the architecture of this file is everything's on separate layers and you've seen why that's really important. So I can go in and change the colours, I can change lots of things about it and not adversely affect anything at all. So that's why that's there, but if I want to take this image and do something else with it, then I actually need everything on one layer. And I can do that, again, in a non-destructive way by selecting it and it's Shift, Option, Command, E. And what will happen there is it will make a copy of all the visible layers and put them together in one layer. And that's what it's done and that's what I've got with layer one. Now, I'm going to turn off layer one, I'm going to turn off that hello one and go back to the OK one and do exactly the same. And now I should have another layer, layer two. So I'm going to move layer one just below layer two. Doesn't now matter what I do with the rest of these, I could turn the whole lot off. Doesn't matter at all. So I'm going to take, uh, let's start off with this one which is my Hello magazine. Now, it's a magazine cover. Mm. So it would be nice to be able to display it as if it were a magazine. And that is also very, very easy to do. I now need another file. So I'm going to File Open and go and find my magazine stack. So I'm going to open up a new Photoshop file, one I had prepared earlier, and that is a stack of magazines. Not very exciting magazines, admittedly. But the reason that they look like that is that this file is ready to take what's called a smart object. Now, you've actually seen a smart object already, but without me explaining what it was. So I'm just going to flick back here. When I brought in the magazine um, cover to overlay onto the photograph, it, I said file place. I didn't open it and paste it in. I did a file place. And file place means that it, it actually put it in the file as a smart object. So I'm going to zoom right in so you can see this little symbol here, which means it's a smart object. Now, one of the things you can do with a smart object, it means you can resize it, rescale it and lose no quality. That's one of the things it does. But the other thing it does, uh, I can better demonstrate in the other file which is it acts, and just to show you, I have three here. I have front, two, and three. It acts as a placeholder whereby I can go in and change the smart object and it will automatically update the entire file. So if somebody says to you, why on earth would I pay £800 for Photoshop? This is one of the reasons why, because this doesn't happen in Acorn, it doesn't happen in Pixelmator. Now, all I need to do is to go back into here, make sure I've selected a layer that has got everything compressed onto it, do a Command and A or a Control and A, and a Command and C or Control and C. And what I've done is I've copied it. Then I go back to my stack of magazines and I need to put this where it says front. Really simple to do. Go over to the layers and double click on the Smart Object icon. And it gives me a warning saying what I need to do, which is pretty much when I've edited it, I need to save it and then come back into here and it will update it. That's what it's telling me. So, OK. And it's opened up 
what is the front of that magazine? Not completely impressive so far. And all I need to do is paste uh, my what's on my clipboard into there. Now, it's not quite the right size, but I can deal with that. So uh, I need to go into here and I'm just going to make that just the right size by transforming it. So what I did was Command and T or Control and T and literally just making it just the right size. And OK there. So it's just a little bit short. And that's all I need to do. Now what I'm going to do is now close down this. Now remember what I'm closing down. I'm not closing down the magazine stack photo. I'm just closing down the smart object that's inside it. So I'm going to close that and it will say, do you want to save this? Well, I do need to save it. That's what that dialog box said. So save there. And it has automatically updated what was in that smart object. And now it's my magazine. Now, you can see that you've got shading in there. It does actually look as though it's a magazine. If you look on the left hand side of it, it actually looks like it, there's a bump there because there, there's so many pages. Very, very simple to add that to the other smart objects in here. So go into number two and paste that in again. Again, I need to transform it. So make it a little bit bigger at the top, a little bit bigger at the bottom. Now, you're not going to see too much of this. This time I'm applying it. I've I saved it and it said you want to apply that. And yes, I do. And you can see what's happened now is that it's appeared behind it. It's now on magazine cover number two. You're not going to see too much of it, but you can see enough to see it's a second copy of the magazine. And for the third one, I'll do something different, which is I'll go back and I will get the other cover, which was the uh, KO magazine. So again, I'm copying that, go back into my magazine stack. And this time I need to change number three, which is the third one at the back. And I'm going to paste in there. It's thinking about it. Uh, and that's the same one. I don't want that one. Just a minute. Let's get rid of that undo that. Oh, you're not going to undo either. Okay, well, you can play if you like. I'll get rid of that that way. Right, back into here. Right, what is the matter with you? I need that one. Looks like I wasn't selecting the right layer. That'll teach me, won't it? That's better. So paste that in and change that. And you'll notice that one of the changes I made was the information on the bottom left and the top right are very, very different. So when I save this, and it will prompt me to save it, yes I do, and it will go back to my stack, you can actually see the difference. You've got a red stripe on the one at the back, and you've got the blue stripe on the other two. So that is how you take a photograph, uh, make it so you could use it on a cover, and then actually show it on a cover. Uh, and that, like I say, is incredibly popular. So that is sort of a demonstration and a half of that. Thank you.